Today, we're going to be talking about modern homesteading. What actually is homesteading? How can you start to homestead? And what is really the difference between a home and a homestead? We're going to be going over all of that today. I'm Danielle of the Slitero Farm and welcome to our channel where we bring you new content every Wednesday and Sunday to tell you about our homestead and farm and teach you learn the skills so that you can create your own homestead. But today we're going to take a step back and actually go over what homesteading is in today's world because it's really transformed over the past few years. Now, Back years and years ago, homesteading meant that you basically just owned land. But that isn't really the meaning that we use today in modern homesteading. Modern homesteading is more of an idea of becoming more self-sufficient. Whether you are on-grid or off-grid, you are making it so that you can rely on your land, maybe the livestock that you have in it, the garden, or even just doing things at home like learning to sew, build your own things to become less reliable on the world around you and make it so that you can actually create these things on your own, which is so exciting and it really opens up the door to the amount of people that can actually become homesteaders because it means that you can start to do homesteading regardless of where you are today. And that is probably one of my favorite aspects. Now, if you've been following along in our story, you'll know that we actually moved recently and bought a 10 acre plot of land that we are turning into the split arrow farm. And we're taking you along on all of the things that we're doing here. But if you do live in an apartment or more of an urban setting, there are still so many things that you can do to start homesteading. And we're going to go over some of those in just a bit. When we talk about modern homesteading, you're going to find that it really isn't what you're doing. It's more of the mindset that you have. It means that you are less reliant on the people around you and you are more self-sufficient. Maybe you're prepping for things around you. That could be canning goods, making anything that can be preserved. You are more self-sufficient. Maybe you're not living on the grid in a more bigger version of this. So you have solar power that you're bringing into your house. You're collecting rainwater so that you do not have to live on the well or public water systems. And those are just some of the ways that you can start to be a homesteader in a sense but just having the mindset that you are more self-reliant, self-sufficient, autonomous, and that you are closer to nature is going to mean that you are really encompassing more of what a modern homesteader is today. And you might think that raising chickens is the beginning of homesteading. And there are a lot of homesteaders that start by raising chickens. We actually started by raising rabbits and we love our rabbits. Not only do they create great companions and pets, but they can also be a great source of meat, of fur, and they're really easy to work with and they can be housed in pretty small environments. So you can do this in more of an apartment homesteading setting. We have found that within the homesteading community, a lot of what homesteading is about is having a more holistic view, that everything is interconnected and that we can be a part of this as well as help it move forward. Now, when you're thinking, about why you want to start homesteading, you're going to want to look at what your goals are. And maybe that is to reduce your carbon footprint, to be better at recycling, and maybe to start composting. Those are different ways that you can start homesteading in a small way that can make a really big impact. And as you start to think about these holistic views and what's important to you, we find that a lot of homesteaders will also take that and feed it into you with their family and their friends around them so they are spreading that holistic view to all of them around them and making it so that everyone feels a little bit more connected to the world around us and we're yearning to make it a better place together. What is the real difference between say a home and a homestead? A lot of us probably live in a home today or an apartment or a town home or the likes, but what really does set that home different from a homestead? And the biggest part, whether that house that you're living in has a garden or maybe you have some animals inside, is that you are going to take on that more self-sufficient 
vibe when you are in your homestead. So maybe you're starting a garden today, but a homesteader would be looking to create a bigger garden that they can start to live off of, or at least supplement a lot of their foods in and have a grander plan to make it so that that garden can become bigger and bigger and really feed their entire family. That's going to be more of a goal of a homesteader as opposed to someone that might just have an herb garden in their backyard or windowsill. But you're going to find that a homestead is also a home as well. We think of our house, our land, our animals as a home around us. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than in this home and homestead. But if you are living in a smaller apartment or maybe just an urban setting, there are a lot of different ways that you can start to become more self-sufficient. So we talked about gardening, which is going to be one really great way that you can start with just something on your outdoor patio, maybe outside in the lawn, take up some of those grass and weeds and put in some vegetables and fruits. Or we can actually start talking about maybe raising some livestock. So if you're in a smaller setting, you can choose to raise bees. You can do quails. We have a really great video on a quail cage, which I will link up here, that shows a really well-designed quail setting that you can start to house quails in and you can start producing your own quail eggs that you can consume and they are packed with nutrition and healing powers. Or you might want to, if you have a little bit larger of a setting, get some rabbits we have, which could also be in like that apartment setting or maybe a larger setting if you want to kind of keep them alone in themselves. Um, chickens are going to be needing a little bit more space, maybe a backyard. If you want to do pheasants, um, any other larger type bird animals. And then if you want to go even larger, then you can start thinking about raising dwarf goats, pygmy goats. If you're going to go even larger, then you could start thinking about cattle and cows and how you could start raising some of them. Again, you're going to want to make sure that as you look into any of these animals and raising livestock, that you do consult with your town or state to make sure that there are no regulations around it. I know in our township, we have regulations on chickens, but if you are a certified farm, then you do not have to always worry about them. So really make sure that you consult the people around you and anyone in your town to make sure that there are no regulations around that and you are following all of the rules. Homesteading isn't always just about livestock and gardening, but it also means that you are more self-sufficient and you can make your own types of goods. So you're going to want to make sure that if you are deciding to homestead, that you think of things that you do like or you use a lot, and maybe you would want to pick up some of those traits. Chris really loves to get his hands dirty, get into things. So he's found that woodworking and craftsmanship is something that he's wanted to devote a lot of his time and energy towards. And we've built so many things in our house. Didn't have to go out and purchase and it saved us a lot before some of the prices of wood went up but even as you as you become more self-sufficient maybe you actually have a mill in your backyard that you can cut and use your own wood from and that's something that you're going to want to think about as you're kind of thinking through your goals of homesteading some other things that you can think about trying are maybe creating your own beer or wine doing preservatives or jams canning, pickling, the list goes on and on. Maybe learning to sew, create your own clothes or mending of clothes so that you don't always have to go out to the stores, especially if you do decide to live more off grid, then you're going to want to make sure that you really don't need to run out to the store as often. It might be a lot further and you won't be able to get there fast. So being able to fix your own clothes or fix your own furniture or be able to make things is going to be really important to making sure that you can become a lot more self-sufficient. Now we like to call city steading, which is when you can actually homestead in the city. And I've talked a lot about this before, but I'm sure there are so many people that do not have the means of getting a lot of land right now. You might be looking into it, but I definitely suggest that you start practicing your own creation of things. Like I said, you could be creating 
your own jams or preservatives, if you don't have the resources of fruits and vegetables around you, then try creating your own soaps, your own cleaning products, which I'm actually going to be doing a video on that shortly. So you're going to want to stay tuned and hit that subscribe button so that you can be a part of our homesteading community. And there are so many other things that you can start trying to do at your own house and really looking into other YouTubers or videos or blogs that they're making other things. Think about the things that you use every day and that's going to be a really great base to start thinking about what you can get as maybe hobbies or tasks that you can start learning so that you can become more self-sufficient and more of a modern day homesteader. As you start to think about your future as a modern day homesteader, one question that always comes to mind is profits and how you're going to actually create money while you are homesteading. Here at Splitter Row Farm, Chris and I do produce and sell some different items. We are selling both chicken and quail eggs, as well as selling lumber as a part of our farming here. And we're working to create more and more products as we move forward. But there are a lot of things that you're going to be able to do as well. So think back to some of those projects that I said earlier. Maybe you're creating and selling your own soap. Maybe you are selling honey that's created by the bees. Maybe you're selling meats dependent on your area. Again, New Jersey has large restrictions around the resale of animal meat without a USDA approved kitchen. So you're going to want to look into what your state regulations are around that. But creating a profit is going to be a large part of if you become a full-time homesteader or if it's more of just a hobby and mindset that you're trying to keep going. We both have full-time jobs on the side as we do everything here and it can be a lot of work. So sometimes you don't always want to come home and clean out the coops of the chicken, but in the end, these are animals and they are your family. So you really do need to make sure that when you decide to purchase or make any of these animals a part of your homestead, that you are taking them into mind as you think about your future and what you really want out of homesteading. If you are living in an apartment and you have dreams of living in your own homestead, then I definitely suggest you follow up on our channel as we're going to be talking about the steps of creating your own homestead next week. So you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and become a part of our journey. But the big thing to think about is you can start homesteading today. It is a mindset and it is about becoming self-sufficient and doing things on your own, getting your hands dirty and putting in the work to reap the benefits of everything that you've created. It's great to eat out at restaurants, but having the taste of your own eggs that you were able to cultivate or the fruits and vegetables that you were able to grow all year long is such an amazing feeling and I hope you guys will feel this way soon as well. I'm Danielle of the Split Arrow Farm and I hope you have a great afternoon. Bye!